Hello and welcome to this short video on assessment at Edenhurst. My name is Dave Barber and I'm Director of Studies at Edenhurst and as part of this role I oversee assessment across the school. We've put this short video together with the aim of providing a brief overview of the different types of assessment that your child will undergo at Edenhurst and how the resulting data is used to help our staff provide the most effective education that they can. We hope that you find this information informative and that it answers any questions that you may have about the school's assessment process. If you require further information, please don't hesitate in contacting the school directly. At Edenhurst, we pride ourselves on having a thorough understanding of the children in our care. Through strong relationships with the children and their families, we are able to provide an extremely high standard of pastoral care. These good relationships are the foundation stones upon which we are able to build a successful education. This building process begins with staff effectively assessing the needs of the children. By building a clear picture of the child's needs, teachers are able to plan bespoke lessons that enable them to progress their learning efficiently. This assessment process is a continual loop involving the assessment of needs, the delivery of bespoke lessons to address those needs, and then reassessment to evaluate the impact and so on. The acronym POPA is useful in defining what we assess in school. Potential. Children are not simply empty vessels to be filled with information. Like everyone, they are often predisposed to certain subjects. They often, but not always, lean towards either creative subjects, art, English, humanities, or technical, mathematical subjects. Having a predisposed strength in a subject doesn't mean that the child will struggle in the opposing subject. However, for the teacher, having insight into the child's learning styles and strengths can be very useful when tailoring the lessons to maximise potential. We use a cognitive ability test to glean information about the children's potential in different areas. From this test, we are presented with a clear picture of where their strengths lie, be it verbal, non-verbal, quantitative or spatial leanings. Attainment. It's important that teachers have a clear picture of where the child is in terms of the curriculum and how their knowledge compares to national expectations for their age. Teachers are only able to plug the gaps once they know where the gaps are. Initial assessments are made through a series of tests that provide them with a deep detailed picture of the child's current attainment. The teacher can see at a glance how well individual children performed in the tests against national expectations for their age. Additionally, these tests allow the teacher to glean further detailed information about specific areas of the curriculum that the child performed well in as well as areas that need further work. These tests are conducted annually, enabling teachers to see how effectively targeted areas of the curriculum have been addressed. Progress. By monitoring the child's progress between different points in time, we are able to see clearly how initiatives have impacted on the child's learning and decide which were effective. We can also use this information to target support to children who aren't making expected progress, as well as those that are exceeding expectations. By identifying these children quickly and taking appropriate action, any issues can be rectified and needs dealt with. We use a tracking programme called Pupil Asset to track the child's progress, as well as to make comparisons to the attainment tests. Pupil Asset allows teachers to see in an instant exactly which children are on track and who is falling behind or exceeding expectations. Clearly, for assessment to be effective, teachers need to be able to identify whether a child has learned whatever is being taught. That begs the question, what is it to have learned something? You know you've learned something well when you understand it. You can explain it to someone so that they understand it. You can apply your knowledge for example, speak and understand a language you learned, or make or fix something with a skill that you learned. 
During lessons, teachers are continually evaluating understanding and reacting to it. Through effective questioning, feedback and a discussion, it's possible for a teacher to make accurate judgments about a child's level of understanding of the objective being taught. The teachers record this data into pupil asset as soon as they are able, either after the lesson or even during the lesson. Teachers colour code the degree of success that each child met the objective from beginning, improving, achieved or exceeding. Over time, this data builds a picture as to where the child's strengths and weaknesses are. Attitude. At the start of each year, we conduct a pupil attitude survey, which provides teachers with detailed information about the child's feeling about school, their perceived learning capabilities, their self-regard as a learner, and their attitudes towards teachers. The learning process can often be an uncomfortable journey. Whenever we learn anything new, we go through a process of failure, then struggle before reaching eventual success. To be successful in this journey requires a degree of positivity. The child's attitude to school, their teachers, their own ability to learn, etc. have a huge impact on outcomes and can't be ignored by the teachers trying to plan effective lessons. Children with low self-esteem or those who believe they have poor learning capabilities or have a dislike for school will be less motivated to succeed in the learning process as they'll be less inclined to struggle through the difficulties. At Edenhurst, we've been working hard to help the children develop a growth mindset. I hope that you find this video useful. If you have any questions, please contact the school and working together, we'll strive to maximise your child's potential.